Hi, and welcome to the show podium. We're on session 054, and we are the last session now with a very special guest, Michael Neal. So let me introduce you to Michael Neal. He is an internationally renowned transformative coach and the best-selling author of six books, including Creating the Impossible, The Inside Out Revolution, and The Space Within. Michael is often described as the coach's coach and commands extraordinary respect within his field for unleashing the human potential with intelligence, humour and heart. He has spent over 25 years as a coach, advisor, friend, mentor and creative spark plug to celebrities, CEOs, royalty and people who want to get more out of themselves and their lives. His books have been translated into 18 languages and his public talks, retreats, seminars and online programmes have touched and transformed lives at the United Nations and in over 60 countries and on six continents around the world. His TEDx talk, Why Aren't We Awesomer, has been viewed by over 200,000 people. Michael's weekly radio show, Living From The Inside Out, has been a listener favourite on Hay House Radio for over a decade. His weekly blog and podcast, Caffeine For The Soul, is now in its 18th year and going strong. Just before we go over to the interview, I just want to set the scene because the area of poor behaviours and discipline is a topic, it's a hot topic right now, especially in the UK. And recently we have seen the professional rugby player Joe Marler was shown a red card during a Harlequins Premiership match, which also rendered him unavailable now for national duties. So as coaches, what is it that we need to understand that will help players to perform at their best, leaving no stone unturned, totally absorbed in the love of the game, but to be able to remain available for selection and to play within the rules of the game? Okay, so in terms of behaviours and poor behaviours, you know when athletes lose it out there, either on the pitch or in the bar, late out outside of the arena. Coaches have all sorts of managers have all sorts of ways of dealing with those poor behaviours. So, can you speak to that a little bit in terms of what what it is we're looking at in not a performance behavioural model, but truly understanding where that comes from. Yeah, and I'm going to come at it a little sideways, if that's okay. When my son turned about 13 or 14, I think he was 13, he got into a screaming row with his mother and swore at her. And I grabbed him, took him out. We went for a drive. And and I talked with him. You know, once he'd settled down, we had a long talk. And it was a good talk. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I said, all for the next five to seven years, you're going to be on drugs. I don't do drugs, dad. I said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I I said, you're going to have testosterone and adrenaline running through your body. And there are going to be times where it's going to make you feel out of control. It's going to make you crazy. And I want you to know that we know that. And so we're going to cut you more slack than we might otherwise do, because we know that that's happening inside you. But even though we know that's happening inside you, there are certain things that are no go. I don't care how crazy you feel. You don't swear at your mother. I don't care how crazy you feel. You don't, you don't hit somebody who can't fight back. Right. And, and uh, that was pretty much it. <laughs> like, I, mean, I don't have a lot of rules, but those two were there. Right. There might have been one more. I don't remember. Right? And it was great because we, we had this talk and, and, and and I could see that it was that he knew what I meant. Like he, he it was it touched him. And then he, he, his response was, "Dad, can you have this talk with mom?" <laughs> and, I, and I think I think I I I would like to think that every athlete, particularly young athletes, that somebody could have that talk with them mm-hmm. somewhere along the line. Because when, A, if you're an athlete, chances are you're running high on the testosterone and the adrenaline, male or female, particularly during and after a match, Mm -hmm. right? 
those are drugs. They have an impact on the nervous system. They heighten your sense of arousal. They heighten your flight or fight or flight impulse. They heighten the sexual drive. They heighten all that stuff. Now, if I don't know that, I might not understand why I'm acting the way I'm acting. I might think that's just me. I'm a competitor. I'm fierce. I'm a man. I'm a this. I'm a that. And and it will feel like I'm uh, I have to behave certain. If I know that that's going on inside me, but it is not me, then I, I can take that into account and I know when to walk away and when to move forward. I know when to leave the bar. I know when to not hit send on my uh, drunk email or text or whatever. Right? If I don't have that perspective, then I'm going to do my best. And maybe because I'm trying to be really disciplined and I know how disappointed coach will be and I want coach's approval, maybe that'll control my behavior, but it won't in the extremes and I'll just feel bad about it. Mm. The understanding will help me a lot more. Um, but if I don't have understanding, guilt and shame will do something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's really a lovely um, sort of addressing the whole area of discipline. So I, I like that. Yeah. Because so often um, coaches and managers get caught up in the, the forms of the discipline for the behavior, as opposed to understanding, well, what's behind it? What's, what's Yeah. And the problem with punishment and reward is it, you have to be able to enforce it consistently, which most managers are not in a position where they really can because the player's getting paid more than they are. The player's more important to the team than they are often. You know, I mean, there are exceptions and those managers can rule that way. Mm. Um, you, you want buy-in, not compliance. Yeah. Like that would be, that would be the guiding principle for me mm. is is, yeah, if I can't get buy-in, I may be stuck with compliance and I'll do my best with it. But buy-in is going to trump compliance a thousand times out of a thousand. Yeah. When players buy into what's going on and what we're up to and how we want to do it, they're going to outperform the people who are doing it because they're, they know that they might lose their job if they do it wrong. Yeah. Which tends to make them more self-conscious, put more pressure on themselves and perform worse over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in terms of the sort of interpersonal relationships between each of the team members, when you have this understanding in a team environment, it, it seems to me that those relationships are very different and there is less, way less potential for um, complete destruction within the team. Right. Because the thing is, you know, that's why they say um, winning uh, I, I forget the exact, like winning cures all ills. Like, you, you, you know, it's all fine when you're winning because you know, it doesn't matter. You know, the fact that you're pissed off at this guy or angry at this person, or it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Let's go out there and play. But when you're losing, well, oh my God, everything matters. Well, that's arbitrary. Like we've learned that. It, it, it matters if you think it matters. It doesn't matter if you don't think it matters. I love watching. Um, uh, see, I'm a, I'm a New England Patriots guy. I came by it honestly. I was a fan when they lost every game 52 to nothing. So like the fact that they've been really good for a while is great, but I was loyal long before that. Well, <laughs> one of the things I love is watching the players lose it with each other and with the coaches on the sideline because on that team, it genuinely doesn't matter. They don't. They 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 express what they wanted to express, and they move on, and nobody cares, <laughs> right? There's no sense that it's problematic that in the heat of the moment you yelled at somebody. Cool, yeah. happens, right? Now, not fighting. They don't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. right? Very few, very few times in the last twenty years, you'll see a, a New England Patriot get in an actual fight and stay on the team. But lose it with each other? Sure. Why not? No big deal. Okay. And, and again, there's buy-in. It's not compliance. There's buy-in. 
And I would say, Michael, certainly with the English cricket team, what is it, five years ago or maybe longer now, where there was complete rift. I mean, it just basically blew apart and they didn't have that buy in there. They had, I suppose, the traditional values that they all agreed to, those um, codes of conduct that they all, you know, in a really good, cool state of mind, say, yeah, I, I promise to do here, da 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 But when it really come to it and they were away from home for long, long periods of time, the, they just, the coaching, the, the whole environment didn't have any understanding at all with regards to state of mind. And and then there was very little support there for for the players. And in fact, it, it, mental illness started to creep in with those players. So they, they didn't have any of that support. And I see that if they'd have had an understanding of, of, of the principles as we're this work, then that wouldn't have happened. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have gone where it went. Yeah. Under uh, you know, understanding the principles doesn't mean you don't get angry, you don't get upset, that you're going to suddenly agree with everybody, and it's all going to be magical Disney team. It it means that when you do get angry at each other, when you do get upset, when you do disagree, you find ways of doing it within the larger goal, within the larger direction of hey, we want to go out there and play great, we want to go out there and do our best, we want to go out there and win, we want to be champions. Like, great. Well, this is what it's going to take. And yes, stuff's going to come up along the way. And if that stuff ever starts seeming more important than the end result, you're on the wrong team. Not because you lost it, but because you think losing it is more important than winning. Mm -hmm. And again, if I can't get buy-in, I don't have the team. I don't deserve the team. It's not to say I'll always get it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but that's the prerequisite. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. You know, whereas the sort of laissez-faire... See, the problem is if you have an approach... Oh, I'm a laissez-faire coach. I'm a player's coach. I kind of let them work it out. Well, that'll work for some of them and not others. Well, I'm a tough guy coach, right? Players know when they play for me, they've got to follow the rules. Well, that'll work for some of them and not others. And that's why teams flip-flop between players, coaches, and discipline coaches, and players, coaches, and discipline coaches. And they kind of eventually get most people some of the time, right? Whereas if you've got a coach who doesn't have an approach, they have an understanding. Well, that will come out as discipline when discipline's what's called for. It'll come out as letting things unfold when letting things unfold is what's called for. And it will all unfold within this larger vision for what's possible for the team and the direction they want to go. And that's your super coach. That's your ultimate coach. That's the person that you want coaching your team and coaching your players. Wow, thank you so much to Michael Neal for this incredible journey. We've had five amazing shows um, in conversation with Michael and I just want to wish him every success with his book, Creating the Impossible. And I know that if you do buy it, you are in for a real treat. I absolutely love it and I think it's a genius piece of work. So if you would like to get hold of Michael, you can do so on www.michaelneal.org. You can also find details of all of his books and purchases on his website. You can also find the link to buy his book on www.class-performance.com forward slash podcasts. And the link will be underneath the link to this show. So if you would like to contact myself, you can do so by sending me an email on denise.holland at class-performance.com. And that just leaves me to say thank you so much for listening and I look forward to learning and sharing with you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.